Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. Sorry about my focus. It it jumped when I turned the camera on. It's weird. At any rate, welcome to the channel. We are going to paint a misty mountain situation in blues and I have out my M-Gram palette. I am going to use cobalt blue, ultramarine, and indigo because those are the three colors that closest match um, all of these colors for the card. There you go. And I got this new tube of Daniel Smith Ultra Fine Watercolor in Bronzite Genuine. Genuine. And um, I haven't even opened it yet, so we're doing this together. It's supposed to have a little bit of sparkle. I thought maybe we could play with it a little tonight, add it in with our mix, see see what happens. I'm going to put, um, this is my core watercolor palette, it has a bunch of blue stuff in it, we might grab that. Um, otherwise we're sticking with M. Graham, and I'm going to start, actually let's start by mixing some colors. I'm using 140 pound as usual, um, cold press watercolor paper. This is the Artist Loft brand. This is the Michaels Craft Store brand of, um, I'm just adding water to these two areas right here. I'm going to add a little water right there. I'm going to set that there. I'm going to go ahead and make my Sennelier Indigo is all... Oh, that's my ultramarine. Sennelier Indigo is pretty much gone. There's just a little residue in the bottom there. So we'll use my Daniel Smith Indigo to go with my Daniel Smith Bronzite Genuine. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up a puddle of Indigo. I haven't used my this palette in a while. I've been using my core watercolors and my um, every single time I get on the phone or on the camera. <laughs> Seriously, I'm gonna go ahead and mix some. Kind of mid tone over here, which we can dilute and add to as we go, as we need. Um, tighten that off a bit. I'll grab some ultramarine and put it over here. It'll be a little muddy, but there's nothing really pure about this picture except for that pale, pale line in the background, which I'm going to go ahead and start with. We're going to start at the top and work our way down and work in layers as we go. We set this guy up here. Um, this was, uh, I'm going to set it over here so you guys can actually see him. Just pull this down a bit. There we go. That's not very helpful either. <laughs> uh, well, once again, this is what we're working with. So, you can stop the video and take a little snippet if you want to. I'll go ahead and dampen the paper up here and kind of just let it mist out at the bottom. There like that. Set this guy aside. And I'm going to grab brush. Kind of pure. And this will dry a lot lighter. We're just going to go in nice and light. And there's a touch of teal in that background. I'm feeling it. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this cobalt teal. Put that back there as well. So I'm going to get that a little bit of wispy, stripey sky. A little darker up here. That. And ideally for this kind of painting you would work on a slant. 
Oh, yeah. Just 10 degrees or so, just so that the paint has, it, it can roll down the page, is ideal. It's like the ideal way to do this kind of painting. Honestly, I didn't think about it before I set up, and we're just going to roll with it. Alright, let's get in some of those little switch brushes, I think. That was a Princeton Neptune round number 18. This is a Princeton Velvet Touch round number 10. I'm going to go ahead and do the most distant, distant mountains back there. I'm just going to... Oh, this is really, really wet. I'm just going to dab them in because they're very... bumpy and misshaped. You know, they're not sweeping smooth lines. It's an actual range back there, it looks like. And a little peek in here. And some bits like that. Okay. And come over here. Get in a high peak. So the middle ones are a little, just a little bit there. And that kind of goes off the page like that. Okay. And just mess that out right there. Just mess it up. Maybe. No. Little tiny drops of dark and gold. Hmm. Are we tired of either? Here and there. Do you like that? Do you like that? I think like I do. Now my paper's buckling and moving around. This has got different levels of wetness going on. Um, my mountains and my sky are merging and going to probably cause a bloom right there. So to help that alleviate just a bit, let's go ahead and A little swipe. Like and you can come in and pick up paint with your brush. You can dab if things got carried away. You can dab with that. It'll help miss things out a bit. We can always go in later with that as well. I don't know. I think this brown's ain't genuine moving around. It's got a bit of sparkle to it, and I want to add it to the foreground mountains just for a little bit of interest. I'm going to show you the paint up close because I don't drip it on anything. Can you see the little sparkles in it? There we go. A little bit of, let's see. It's got a little bit of sparkle in it, which intrigues me. Okay, so. I'll tap that off as much as I can. Clean the brush in the dirty water, dab it off. Okay, let's, let's get this darker. Range in right here. Grab some indigo. A bit of pure blue. Feels very purpley to me. Doesn't it feel purpley to you guys? I guess we can just roll with it, right? We'll just roll with it. That'll be fine. There's different, there's different layers happening here, so I'm just playing with that. 
pretty much know what I feel like doing. Do what feels right. You don't have to follow your reference photo exactly because ah, it's just so fun. Okay, grab some pure color. Put it here. Dab it in. Let it bleed around a little bit. Alright. Some water. And just soften this out. This time, I got blue. Encourage it to move around a little bit. Put a touch of indigo. Add that in. The hills back here. And a little pure. Them in with a little bit of separation. You can always come back and add more. If you want, you can break up that, that line right there and make it more rocky, more misty trees, or that kind of thing. It doesn't have to be a smooth line at all. Like that. Okay. I really want to put some purple in here. I like badly. I'm not going to, but I want to. This is kind of monochrome, I guess. That's the way you could look at it. A little monochrome. Crack me off. Just a little more. Yeah. This is starting to dry a little bit, so we can move this range up a bit. Okay. Soften this. Come in. Put another level of tint right here. Right. Very distant. Do it. I think this will come in from here. And a little brush. And dab it down. And mist it up. If anything gets too hard between your mountain peaks, just give it a little wet and a little dab. And that'll help soften things back out. Yep. I'm going to soften this line right here. Right there. Just right there. You can also take a tissue just like you would with your clouds. And dab in between your, your layers to get that mist. A little misty effect. Super fun when you're doing layered forest as well. I've done layered mountain painting in quite some time. Um, that's a bit darker. Right there. Over there. 
here. These are kind of super quick, but you can, as you can see, mess around with each layer, add to, take back, that kind of thing. Um, Put the brush around on the paper if the paper will take that kind of abuse. Wet, wet that bottom line and just pull that color down till, it, till it's pretty clear down here. We're going to put dark color down here so it doesn't really matter what that looks like. The misty parts, but I interest going on. Not too much, you don't want to have too much interest today. Okay, okay. I'm looking at this section here, whoops, this above this darker section, which we're going to do next. Um, but see how misty and convoluted and basically um, abstract, right? It feels, it doesn't have to be perfect and exact. Abstract is good. Okay, let's get in here. I'm going to mix some of this genuine with this blue over here. And it's gonna ooh, look at that. It's gonna look great. I don't know. Let's grab some. Take that off. Indigo. Pop that in there. And then we'll go genuine. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get in this basic shape here. With our, ooh, it's sparkly. I really need that to be darker. And a little more inky. Not too much water going on. There we go. There it is. And we'll just come up here and feed our dark, darker. Pretty dark at the top. Cut the layers of stuff happening. Oops. Oh, that looks cool. All right. <coughs> and this back here is, it's really warm in my apartment. This back here that's fuzzy is really dry right now. And if you can hear my fan, I didn't think about that till just now. I'm really sorry. It is 88 degrees in the apartment right now. I'm not turning the fan off. Hopefully you can hear me all right. I will try to reduce the background noise a bit. Let's put some wet in right here. Grab that in a good one. Pop it in right there. Let's see what the bottom's going on because it just looks cool. Put the top there. Alright. And then more. Even darker, more inky consistency when we mix indigo and ultramarine together. We get this kind of middle blue right here. And we're going to pop that in with this lower. Well, it's still pretty wet, the paint, I mean, the water on the paper. It's pretty wet. 
Look how many. Just get in some shapes. Like this. Like that. Make some more browns. Throw that in for fun. Mix things up a bit. Seems to temper that blue a bit, doesn't it? I dig it. I'm digging it. Okay. Something's out a bit right there, but a little too soft. Just tap, tap, tap. And let the color bleed back in a little bit, and then it'll, it'll create a little misty line right there. I'm going to do the same up here when things got a little carried away. I'm go ahead and pull our misty line through here. I'm drying my brush and then running it on the page. Four. Hold on, you can grab your tissue. And just gently tap. It creates that misty cloudy effect, but if you get too much going on, you can always add a touch of paint. Establish your area real quick. Oops. Sorry, it's glaring right there. There. Okay. Just some clean water, too. If you take clean water sometimes and run it on the area, it'll push the paint away kind of creates a bloom okay. Okay. moving on got this really dark heavily right here see that inky consistency on the page I actually can draw with this right now. It's that it's that thick. That's what you're looking for. And I'm gonna use straight indigo. Get in this little right here that's kind of dancing around like that. It's very dark. Slightly lighter than, than our last line that we're putting down here at the very bottom. I think I'm going to put some of this. No, I don't. Some indigo. This. Indigo. Ooh, that kind of created a nice deep brown color. layer of dark down here. And swoops up a bit right there. And I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this. Just gently ran my brush over it. And then pick up just a touch of this. That. And if it's not getting dark enough, I'm going to add neutral tint. That's a neutral tint. Rules are meant to be broken, you guys. Do what you want. Neutral tint and indigo. And a touch of dioxys in the background. Oops, that's that. 
super Make consistency. Close the door. Yep. Up a bit here. Up a bit there. Down like that. Others. Grasses and the occasional tree. Different. Just to break it up a little bit. And I don't mind a silhouette down here, but I don't. A little bit of light reflecting here and there is nice. Oh yeah. I mean, without bussing too much more, here's our reference photo. I kind of got a little too light in this middle section right here. This part should be the skull strip there. Okay. Dragons and color. Kind of gives the seat back section a little bit of um strip water on there. A little bit of um we call it distance. I feel like some of this got a little dark. Just going on with it and gently lift. Right there. Okay, a little dark right here. Okay. We can go in with our pale, pale, super pale blue. Just a little bit of Mm -hmm. It looks like an ocean instead of a misty mountains. Misty mountains. And that's kind of bottom. The mountains back here go a little, a little too. Um, Misty, right? Just a bit too. You can fuss with this and fuss with this and I mean I don't feel like I succeeded at all but um let's take our tape off anyways and see what it looks like without the tape. I'm way too close to it too. It looks these kinds of paintings look so much better when you take a step back. And this is something I would uh, recommend. Uh, do several, do more than one. That is currently what I'm doing with clouds. Um, I took a little break from clouds because tomorrow is a cloud painting day. Um, I'm going to be painting clouds on on velour paper. 
um, with pastels, chalk pastels, for Friday's video. Yeah, put all the tape on and a little bit of a border. Um, got some, got some misty mountain stuff going on, or ocean waves. I mean, depends on your perspective, right? Could get in there with some dark darks and really make this look very oceany. Um, I'm gonna leave it for now, though. I need to go to bed and move on with other things. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you want to see me try this again, we could do that um, patiently. Uh, or we can move on and practice that was. Yeah, so thank you for being here. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!